description of the data that, that has been provided to you. So in your uh, in the drive folder, I think and it's in the technical uh, in the technical folder, you will find the data .zip and yeah, I'll just show you the structure. Okay, so uh, so we have, uh, as I explained, as in it, at, as it is explained in the doc in the challenge document, uh, uh, we tried to give you a high level description there, and and the name just represents the channel name, the Telegram channel's name. No, uh, basically, it uh, you are working on the Telegram data, so. The name represents the channel name, and the type is just public or private. For now, we are just we just provided you with the uh, public. All the all the channels are public, so uh, all the type will be public. And in the message part, uh, let me quickly show you uh, the data that has. It will take a while, but. Yeah, so we, we have uh, two types of messages. Uh, one is a service message and just a normal broadcaster message. So uh, basically the service message is uh, when the channel is created, uh, channel created is broadcasted. So for example, for this one, the ID one in every, in every channel message will, will represent the service type and it will be just the channel creation time and the the title of this channel so basically the the name uh the current name of the current name of tick by ethiopia uh the title was uh each in a when the channel was created so and after that each id will will increment for each message and you can see that like we, we might have uh for example, for this one, you, you can see uh, after one, it just goes up to 12. And from 12, it might go up uh, up uh, quite number. So uh, this represents some of the messages have, have been removed from, from the channel. So yeah. Uh, and uh, we can see that uh, it's been, uh, the, the date represents the actual uh, date and time for that um, broadcaster message and the Unix time, it just represents the timestamp. By timestamp, it just means uh, uh, the time since, uh, I think, uh, epoch. Uh, in Unix time, there is a term called epoch. And yeah, the timestamp represents that. The, from It's calculated from, I think, 1970 up to now, and we will have that number. So. And we have an edited time and also an edited Unix time. And from ID, if it's, uh, uh, I think if it's for, uh, forwarded and also who was the original author of, uh, author of that message. And for the actual uh, message content, we have, uh, we can consider this text, uh, text key and text entity key. But for now, we just come for, we, you can focus on on which, whichever key is visible for you to pass the actual message. But yeah, and we can, uh, the text can be uh, an array, an array of a string and dictionary, or it can just be a string. So the text has uh, two, two, of, two of those variations, but for the text entities part, we just have an uh, array of dictionaries, have a, having each dictionary having a type and a text keys. So, for example, for this one, we have a plain, a plain text of, uh, having a value, which is actually represented here in the text key. But when we come to the text entity part, it's represented as a plain text. And for the mention part, uh, we can here we, we can see here uh, it's being 
uh, represented as a main, as a, as this, which is mentioned, and this empty space, uh, uh, this white space is represented as <coughs> a plain text in the text entities, and also in the for the mention part, we will have we, we will have as it is, and the, we will have, in the text entities we might have a few other uh, keys, for example, phone number, and let me just show you the other one. Yeah, we, we can see here uh, we have hashtags and also we have link in our text. And when we come to the entities part, we will have the same, that's, uh, except with the addition of the plain key as a type. So uh, the type will be plain and that actual plain text will be, uh, the value would be the actual text, which is uh, it, one of uh, the, as I've mentioned before, the text key might be uh, an array of uh, dictionaries and uh, a string, or it might be just a string. So, for example, uh, let me just show you. Uh, so it can be like this, and it can be an empty string, which means this message uh, doesn't represent any content or doesn't have any content. Mostly, the, this is a case when uh, the channel has broadcasted more than one photos. So the next ID will be assigned for the next photo. So for example, if I posted, if my message ID is 83,649 and I'm adding two, two photos. So the first photo will be represented by the same ID and the next photo, uh, the next photo would be represented by uh, 83,650. So that's basically how Telegram operates. And I can show you here. So for this one, we have uh, a photo here. And so when we come to 51, we have another photo. So for example, when we just check, we have a different name. So for example, for this one, it is, uh, it, is uh, it ends with 08-40. And for this one, it ends with 09-18. So which means, the message ID uh, 83 650 have two photos, uh, might have more than two photos actually. So yeah, but basically if it's an empty, it means that we have uh, the photos have been, uh, it, it just represents a photo. So let me just show you another uh, variation. And for the text part, I, as I mentioned, it might be just, it, it might hold just a string and let me just show you that part. Yeah, which means like if it's uh, only a text or, or if it's only a string, that means that it doesn't have any hashtag or any. The, the only entity that that message has is it's just uh, plain text. So by it just means uh, that message holds a plain text. And if it if it holds other than a plain text, it will have uh, it will be constituted. Uh, it will be represented as an array, an array of. Uh, combination of string and dictionaries. And yeah, let's just, uh, and yeah, since it, uh, the file is, the file has a large number of signs, I think my disk is playing. Oh, let me just close a few, few files. So it will be easier to, to actually present. So for example, for this one, we can see text is represented as an, as a string. So which means, which means that particular uh, string is, that particular message only holds a plain text. Yeah, yeah basically that just, that's the meaning of text having just a string. And if it's an array, as I've mentioned, it's, it's, it means it's a combination of a uh, few entities like hashtag, phone numbers, mentions, and links. Yeah. So basically, the, this is the high level representation of the, the data that 
you will be working on for this challenge. And the main task will be, uh, yeah, the first task will be actually parsing the, all the messages from the JSON and storing it in 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 any appropriate uh, style. So, for example, uh, we we might have a. Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, I, I just just wanna uh, say. In part, of course, don't worry. Like again, every time I come, usually I complex, uh, I make a little bit of complexity, but it is because so sometimes this there are inform this is a raw data, and the raw data contains, as you can see, uh, mostly the message ID tells you the dates or the order, right? So like ID eighty three seven zero eight, it's actually the eighty the eighty three thousand seven hundred eight message. Uh, in that channel so which allows you sometimes and then there is also a reply like so there's edited not edited i think there is a one place where it's called reply uh, to a certain message now yeah reply to message id now those ones you can use them to actually train because they are levels for you right because you can say all of the ones that are replied you can say which is the order does this reply, you know, uh, you can give it like a context of two replies. That's instructional, especially when it's instructional uh, training. You can say, if, you know, here are two texts, what is replying to what, right? The order. And that way, because you know what is replied, what comes first, because as you can see, 83652 uh, is actually later than 83258. So these ways you can actually learn more about it. Like, you know, this raw data, you can get more information that the, the data preparation team in your uh, sub team in your team actually could leverage many of such tricks to generate uh, lots of training data, just especially in the instructional, in the uh, basically in general, yes, supervised uh, fine tuning sense. Just want to add that. can continue that now. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, go on. Uh, okay, uh, so I have a question regarding uh, the contents that don't have um, the text, uh, the text uh, content. So what's the point of adding such, uh, such a data to our database? Since it doesn't have a text content, shouldn't we just be discarding it? Uh, for this part, as I explained, if it's an empty, it means like it it either have uh, a photo. So, for example, uh, when you are using Telegram, you can send more than one photo. So, if you are broadcasting yeah. on a channel, you can yes, yes, uh, but add more than one photos. So that actually yeah, that yeah, I understand why the, they are empty. But would it be of any help for this project? Like, shouldn't we be discarding them? Uh, you, you just for for this part you 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 need to use the text part so if if it if it doesn't have any text there is no use for us for for our context or and for our business need all right you all can right. discuss it while you are parsing so okay. while you parse you just uh, use those uh, text and also if it has a reply trade or if it's if it's if that particular message has a trade you just somehow uh, create a link between those messages but other than that you just use the discard the text if it's an empty one all right all right thank you thank you and okay so any have anybody has any questions about the uh, structure of the data so, uh, uh, yeah, I'll be moving on to the tokenization part. So, excuse me, sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, maybe if you could make it clear on the uh, when it's plain and when it's an ARI. Okay. Uh, so, if it's a plane, uh, it means that uh, if it's also, let me just start over. So, Text will have uh, 
will have uh, an we might be an array, might be a string. So when you are actually checking the type, you might get an array and you might get a string. So by string, I mean it might be an empty an empty string or an, a string that contains some message. So for this part, it, it so you while you parse, you check if it's a string. So it is empty or not. If it's empty, you discard it or you just skip to the next mess to the next uh, the next item in the array. And if it's an array, you pass through the array by just checking if it's a dictionary or if it's uh, a string. So if it's a string in the text key, if it's a string, it means that it's a, a plain text. So let me show you. So for example, uh, we are parsing this particular array, which means we have. Uh, two objects or two dictionaries and two strings. So while you are parsing, the first one you would, you would get the first item would be a, a dictionary. So you parse the text from that dictionary. So which means uh, hashtag, the hashtag part, which is hashtag N-E-B-E -E, comes from the, comes before the actual text. So which is the, our, while we are parsing, the next item would be this, Type this item with a type of string, so those that string will be treated as a plain text or a, uh, just a message. We don't we don't need to actually treat it other uh, other than differently. But for mentions for hashtags, that is considered as a hashtag. So, for example, in the UI, you will find that uh, mentions are uh, represented differently or hashtags are represented differently which means while you are using telegram if it's if if, uh, if there is an entity in the message star which is a hashtag if you click it it automatically searches in that channel having the same hashtag but if it's a mention it will just uh, try to search or try to go to a user that have uh, that have uh, a username that is linked to that have is the same username uh, as the mention so uh, the, the UI treated it, treat this differently. But if it's a plain text, it's just a plain text. It will just display it. So that's the main difference. And so while you are parsing, you just have to check if it's a string or if it's an array. And if it's an array, and while you are looping through that array, you just have to check if it's uh, a dictionary, you will consider um, the text part for each dictionary. and while you are parsing, if you get a string, that means you just append that uh, to your uh, you, to your content. But that's uh, one approach. And the second approach would be to consider the text entities. So you can just loop through the text entities and you just uh, grab the text part and append it to your, con uh, your, your to your uh, message variable. So for example, you have a message variable which is an empty string for this particular uh, message, and while you are looping through the text and this part, you just you will it's guaranteed you will find uh, only dictionaries. So all uh, dictionaries having the two keys, which is uh, key type and key text, and you just consider the value for each dictionary, which is text. So you, the value of the text means it's just part of that message, and if it's a plain, as I've mentioned, it's just some message that that that, that uh, won't be parsed or the any actions won't be treated differently so yeah is it clear uh, okay yeah thank you okay uh go on Abdullah. okay so i'm back with another question this time like should we uh, use the hashtag the mention so basically should we use any type of text that's inside the plain type like should we be uh, adding those texts that don't have the type plain yeah yeah you should consider it so uh, if you uh, so for example you will find uh, for some messages not all but for some channels an ad is represented uh, differently for example so you might find a message having a hashtag uh, of ad so you can pass an ad through that or you can pass an ad in a, in, a, in some different way but you should actually pass all of all of things or all, all things so for example if it's a phone number you should also 
contain it in your message text and in, in your message uh, and also if it's a hashtag you should also contain it so basically you might do uh, later on you might fine tune or you might instru give uh, instruction based on hashtags or based on uh, mentions so the model would better understand what a hashtag, a hashtag is lo looks like uh, out of uh, main text so for example if i have a main text uh, of some sort and that means that main text have hashtag i might find you based on that based on that point yeah okay okay thank you so any other question okay. so i'll just uh, move on to the tokenization part so okay uh, i will be just uh, giving you some introduction in introductory parts on uh, tokenization and word embedding so and i will try to show you some uh, some uh, demos and I'll, I'll, I have attached all the references I've used, so you can just um, go to, uh, go to the references and uh, you can refer more if you, if it's needed. So uh, the definition of tokenization is just given a character sequence or an defined document unit. Tokenization is a task of chopping it up into pieces and called tokens. So, for example, uh, I, I have the following text. So, friends, romance, countrymen, uh, lend, me your, lend me your age. So, while we are tokenizing this, all the uh, all symbols would be they will be discarded. And the, uh, so, friends, romance, countrymen, uh, lend, lend me you and x will be considered as tokens so basically tokenization means just chopping the words into pieces uh, called tokens so uh, we just show away certain characters and such as punctuations so we, we won't consider punctuations and we just consider the words and we'll chop them into uh, into pieces called tokens so we have two two types. So, for example, a type is a class of all tokens con uh, containing the same character sequence, and the term is uh, a type that includes the information retriever system systems uh, systems dictionary. So, a token is an instance of sequence of characters in some particular document that are grouped together as a useful semantic unit for processing. So, for example, if we for when while we create a, a tokenizer or when we are training a model for a tokenize for tokenization uh, we will give it uh, our text our text date size would be uh, will be so big since we need uh, we need uh, a huge number of data to create a sufficient uh, tokenizer which will be reused for other purposes yeah, so basically we will have an information retrieval. I will just show you in the demo on how to retrieve each part. And we have uh, three types of uh, tokenization or tokenization. It just breaks a text down into individual words. So for example, if I have uh, hello world, we will have two tokens, which is hello and world, and which means a common approach and it's uh, for language with clear word boundaries like English. So for example, we know uh, we can separate each word using space in English and each word will have its own unique meaning. Uh, even if it's, it might depend on some context, it will have uh, it will have a distinct meaning. So for example, uh, for the word, for the actual text, hello world, hello have its own meaning and also what it has its own meaning and hello world have its own meaning. So we can actually distinct uh, we can have a clear boundaries between words, which means uh, word tokenization will work effectively. And for character tokenization, and there are a few languages like French, uh, 
Japanese and Chinese, which have uh, which don't which really don't have a, a clear word boundary. So it will be uh, really hard to create uh, a word tokenization. Even if we have a lot a lot of data in character tokenization, it, it's it segmented into individual characters. So it's for language like. Uh, if we have, as I've mentioned, let's say our language doesn't have a clear word boundaries, so we will use it. We will use this approach to create uh, for spelling correction and also to create a tokenization for the language that don't have the clear boundaries. And subword tokenization is striking balance between a word and character tokenization. So we we might uh, we will have we. Will, we will use the word tokenization, the same as uh, character tokenization and in subword tokenization. So this method breaks text into units that might be larger than a single character, but smaller than a full word. So for example, for the word hello, uh, our subword tokenization method will break uh, our current word into five parts, having H, E, and also having a, a any combination so yeah that's what subword tokenization does and some of the use cases are, are we use tokenization for search engines machine translation and speech recognition so for search engines our our input as uh, input text which is uh, will be uh, tokenized while uh, google uh, for example if you are, if we are using google our inputs will be tokenized and for machine translation the the input text will be tokenized too and for speech recognition our speech uh, the speech to text model will actually uh, tokenize the text output of that speech since uh, any speech recognition model uh, will will need to understand the text the text need to be tokenized for a machine to understand it and yeah, and uh, the challenges are um, ambiguity. Uh, ambiguity means, uh, as uh, as I as I explained, uh, words might so might actually have a different, uh, totally different meaning in uh, in certain text so than the actual uh, meaning. So, for example, in hello world, hello means hello actually still represents the same meaning as uh, hello would have an individual or distinct meaning is somehow closer to the actual meaning, uh, which is which uh, while we are using hello in hello world. So, and language without clear boundaries will will be difficult to to be tokenized and also special characters would have uh, would give us a hard time to tokenize for handling special character means for, for example in French uh, we will have we will, we have characters that will come after a single letter so for example for some particular word we might find a character uh, in in that word so we have to actually represent that character that special character rather than removing it and yeah uh let me show you uh after i finish this slide i will show you a quick demo on both word embedding and tokenization so the now let we are we assume we are done tokenizing our, our language basically since we it means that we have some certain tokens so each word is somehow represent, uh, tokenized and represented uh in our vector so also for word embedding it's a type of word representation that allows us allows word with similar meaning to have similar representation so we are actually embedding uh, words into uh, some uh, some vectors so for example we we use vectors and for the vectors we can we can check we can check all the We can check all the uh, uh, vectors, which uh, which uh, all similar words will have similar vectors. Basically, that's the sole purpose of word embedding. So to keep similar uh, words that have similar meaning we, to have uh, closer vectors. So for example, hello and hi, 
might have uh, somehow has uh, a closer vector representation in a vector space, a predefined vector space. So each word is mapped to one vector and the vector values are learned in a way that resembles a neural network. So for example, uh, so we will have, uh, this is mostly unsupervised. So as you see, it's unsupervised. We, we actually are trying to have some similarities or trying to check some similarities between words. So basically that's the, the initial uh, initial definition of word embedding. And some of the word embedding, this, these are not the only, but these are the uh, main uh, embedding algorithms. So they're just, they just learn real valued vector representations for a predefined and fixed side vocabulary from a corpus of text. So we give it uh, a corpus of text and it will actually try to learn a, a real valued vector representation from that text. So we have an embedding layer algorithm. So uh, it's learned jointly with neural network models. So as I've mentioned before, and on a specific neural language processing class, such as language modeling and document classification. And word for vector is a statistical method for efficiently learning a standalone word embedding uh, from uh, text corpus. So we have in word for vector, we have two types of uh, learning models. So the most common, the two common are continuous bag of words and uh, continuous skip graph. So cont for continuous bag of words, the, uh, the algorithm tries to learn embedding by predicting the current word based on its context. So for example, if you have some word, we will try to predict, uh, we will try to predict the current word based on the context. So, but for a script, uh, for a, uh, the skip gram model, uh, we learn pred by predicting the surrounding words given the current word. So for example, if I have hello, I must predict, predict hello word or hello you or hello some, some name. And this is basically the, the, uh, the explanation in a visual turn so we have inputs and we we just try to predict based on context we so wt represents the current word so for continuous back and forth we as 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 we explained it uh, earlier we uh we say uh it learns by embedding by predicting the current word based on the context so the context are wt minus two t minus one T plus two, T plus one, and T plus two. So this is basically a window. So if we are using some some windows, we will try to uh, predict. Uh, we always use those words in the window as a context and try to predict the current words. So for example, for in our case, uh, WT will be predicted from WT minus two, T minus one, T plus one, and T plus two. But in a skip gram model, we actually try to predicts the, the rest of the words based on our given the, the current word. Basically, this is um, some high level description of just uh, how, what word embedding is. And I'll just show you a uh, simple tokenization using an Amharic an uh, text corpus. And I'll show you some simple uh, word embedding using some uh, a few Amharic texts. I'll just uh, proceed to the demo. But before that, if anybody has any question, uh, ask me. Uh, okay, so. I'll just uh, show you the demo. So uh, I'm using sentence piece Python module. So uh, we you can use any 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 approach you like to tokenize but basically uh, you might uh, you might 
you might you might use a simple space based tokenizer and also you might use BERT uh, by fine tuning BERT for uh, for you to take corpus and uh, also we, you can train a sentence based model so sentence based model um, is somehow easier to easier to train and it's somehow faster so uh, I will just demo of that and I, I've attached um, all the references in the slide so at the end of the slide you will have, you have all the references that that are that are essential for word embedding and tokenization so you can uh, you can use that for further uh, for further reading so so we start by uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just loading uh, Tickbytopia. So Tickbytopia is the Telegram channel having over 1.2 million subscribers. And I just uh, chopped the half. Uh, I just did the first half of the Tikva. And you will find the Tikva.json file in your uh, in your data directory, in your data.dip file. Uh, so you can extract all the text, the text messages from that. Uh, you you have to clean. So while you are pre-processing, it is listed in the document what steps you should follow, and you might add some other things. But uh, remember not to be limited on those steps. So for example, uh, let's say we uh, you might find some uh, some characters or some symbols in the text. So you you should just uh, just don't be limited on the on the instructions given on the data on the challenge document. So, for example, for this one, uh, it's just uh, in the embassy of uh, it, it, this one is translated uh, to English as uh, the embassy of America in Addis Ababa, and yeah. So we use. Uh, Model prefixes M and vocab size will use we will use uh, two thousand, and we will uh, actually just check how uh, the, the token values for each uh, for each value. So, for example, after training, uh, we can see that uh, this this word having uh, uh, four sixty. So it it is represented as four sixty from from our vocabulary size. So it will it is represented in 460 and uh, this one, which is Ababa, is represented as 133 uh, and the America is represented as 774 and in Embassy is represented as uh, 1276. So uh, in Amharic, there are few types of, there are few issues. So, Okay, uh, go. Okay, Nathan, I, I would like to ask you why do we, why each token uh, has been represented uh, with, uh, uh, within a single number, a unique number? So that's the basic idea of tokenization. So each, like, uh, so, for example, we might have uh, uh, two words that are the same, uh, the same that are the same meaning, but have different tokens. That's not correct. So that's the actually the one uh, one draw, drawback of using uh, a space-based tokenizer. So, if we are using a space-based tokenizer, even if uh, we have five similar uh, words we will get into the same but we will uh, get five different tokens for those five similar words but we don't want that we want uh, we want each tokens to represent a unique uh, a unique word so we have we we need to have so for example we if we are uh, representing addis we need to have let's say we have uh, addis repeated 10 million times in our text if we have uh, 10 million different uh, values for addis, it will be hard to actually represent the addis. So we need to have a single number representing uh, addis. So for every 10 million, uh, uh, 10 million 
had these uh, occurrences we have in our text, we will have the same uh, total value. Exactly. Okay. okay. So. Now, uh -huh, another question is to yeah. know. Can, can I go? Yeah, you go. Okay. Um, for the. Uh, sorry. I, I will let Aaron go again. Uh, I will come. Okay. I come back with my question. Okay. Can I think I'm audible? Am yeah, I audible? Yeah, you're audible. Okay. Uh, how to how to recognize the word? Just like uh, one word have two meanings, uh, like uh, wana and wana. It have two meanings. So how to Talking or embed into different uh, numerical values, and when we the second question, when we assume that it's like Addis Ababa, Addis has uh, new meaning, uh, meaning uh, new, but uh, it uh, repeat many times. It implies to Addis Ababa. So how to tokenize and embed it uh, to make it unique? So for those cases, uh, we need to apply. Uh, we are actually just using, uh, we are tokenizing the word, right? So this is this is the one of the uh, one of the solutions of uh, transformer. So if actually uh, try to use positional encoding, so why positional encoding? It means that the position also has a factor in the encoding. So for example, as you mentioned, uh, for one name uh, which is translated roughly for in, in English uh, headquarter or the main office, and one, one and also uh, for swimming part we have the same word which is one, one. Yeah, so the actual position would be applied. So you will you will, uh, so this is one of the breakthroughs that comes from uh, transformers. So transformers actually use all the pos uh, positional encoding other than uh, the other Im embedding layers. So for example, if we are embedding the words, just the words, uh, we might have uh, two, two similar words, which have uh, an, a different meaning in two different sentences. So we need to actually represent those as well. So for those scenarios, we use uh, positional encoding which is actually uh, including and also considering all the considering all the uh, positions in, in a certain text. So uh, I hope uh, is a clearer. Yeah, it is clear. Okay, uh, go on, uh, Jamie. Uh, Jimmy can go. Oh, yeah. Can I go first? Yeah, go first. Okay. So, uh, for your earlier explanation, if I understand zero way, uh, according to the position for a given word, if that word maybe is a uh, is represented or uh, in a given sentence many times, according to the position, the position and coding. Uh, the the architecture will learn the different will embed differently these words, and uh, it can understand, uh, and then it can understand uh, the different meaning by uh, by by vectorizing. Yeah. Uh, okay, good. Now, apart apart from that, uh, I would like to know uh, if with the uh, with a, a transformer architecture, do we remove the punctuation after uh, after tokenize 
our sentence or uh, our data basically do we remove the the punctuation and stop word uh do we keep everything like that mm -hmm. so uh, we we use uh, so the common it depends on the language actually for english uh, while you are just creating bag of words uh, you have to remove stop words but to understand the context and to understand the meaning you need to consider that those as well so for example for uh, transformers in case of transformers even every word and every punctuation represents uh, something or it does uh, have a, a, distinct, a distinct meaning so we would consider it while using transformers but for a simple word embedding algorithm we might remove it or you, we might discard it since we just want to learn the similarity between words so for example in word embedding we, we are looking for similar words and if we are actually embedding uh, we are using the sentence level embedding so which is positional encoding would be applied and we are actually trying to find uh, two similar sentences other than two similar words. So in a sentence, bag of words are important. So basically, uh, we will use it. It depends on our use case, but we will use it. Mm -hmm. OK, according to your explanation, it depends on the case. Uh, for instance, yeah. in, our, in our case here, uh, me, for instance, I don't know. Amharic. Amharic. Okay. Language. Yes. I will do. Do we consider removing the the punctuation after tokenizing our data, or do we keep it? Uh, so while while tokenizing, just if you are if we are just tokenizing it, we might. Uh, uh i will say like uh we will just keep it as it is for right now so we don't remove any any symbols okay so, that's good so, yeah. uh, okay you uh jamie you can go on i think uh, i think you won jamie Sorry, sorry, it was a mistake. Sorry. Ah, okay. Sorry, I have a problem with this button. I'm really sorry. It's it's a mistake. Okay. So, uh, going back to the tokenization. So we can hear, we can see here, uh, we are, uh, uh, we can see each the token values for each words. And for our next, we can decode each, uh, each, each uh, IDs and we can get the same, the same uh, words. So for example, in here, we can see uh, 460, 133, 774 and 1200. 76 uh, are, uh, are the encoded IDs for the above text and we can uh, actually hear, hear decode it and uh, cross check if it's the correct one. So we can uh, get piece size will return the vocabulary size uh, and if you remember we, uh, we, we instantiated the vocab size for for it to be 2000 and we uh, we just get the same value here and we can uh, i we can uh, in, encode one id to piece so for example for while uh, while decoding uh, we can pass uh, array of string i mean array of ids but uh, for this case we can actually have, uh, we can actually check id to piece conversion so the piece represents the actual word and the ID represents the 
the token value. So for example, for this one, I do ID two piece represents. So for example, we are trying to uh, fetch the value from ID four hundred sixty, and we are trying to fetch the ID from piece for the second one, and we will actually we have, we actually get uh, four hundred sixty for the for at this end for add this for 460 and uh so uh while we are uh, there are two symbols uh we will uh, uh we will see them uh later but there are two symbols so control symbols and these are defined symbols and the control symbols are uh uh unknown uh so the ids 0 1 2 are uh, are restricted for uh, the unknown symbol s and uh, closing the s tag uh, respectively so we can actually see here the unknown so the uh, uh, is control is just to check if that uh, id is a, a control symbol or not and uh, we can actually check which uh, symbols are controlled or not and we can uh, load and uh, we can load models using tensorflow and yeah we can uh, somehow uh, use that model uh, after we load it from our disk and this we just use a uh, tensor flow to do that and we can here see uh these are defined and these are defined in control symbols so we can define special tokens our sim tweak of uh, the, the behavior of the Algorithm. So typically, the bird says special symbols are the uh, the CLS and SEP, uh, SEP, which is and always uh, the user symbols are always treated as one token in any context. The symbols can appear in a in in the input center. So for control symbol, we only reserve IDs for this token. So as I've mentioned, all the IDs are reserved for the uh, for have a tag of s and in 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 tag of s and those tokens up in, up in the input keys are not handled as one token so for, if we want uh, our tokens to be handled as one token we use it as a user defined symbol uh, but uh, explicitly after encoding so we we need to actually input it so i will show you in the next example so for this one we are training and we are inputting our user defined symbols uh, which is uh, the bird symbols uh, SEP and cls and so for the text we can uh, as i've mentioned before these symbols can appear in a, in, an in 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 the input sentence and come all always treated as one token so they are not they, they are not going to be broken down so if it's a user defined symbol as you can see here for uh, while we're encoding it as pieces uh, is treating each user defined symbol as uh, as a token rather than uh, some string but for control one you can here see uh, our token in our token or in our vocabulary these three words are included which is Addis Ababa yeah, America is included and embassy is also included in our vocabulary but these the symbols are not included but if we are defining as, them as a control symbol they are not, they will they won't be treated as uh, a unique a unique symbol or a unique token so it will actually try to encode it uh, individually but for this one we can actually see it uh, the user defined symbols being uh, encoded uh, as uh, encoded as as it is as it is as in as, as we as we represented it and for this one uh, and for this one we can actually use uh, so S and the in tag S are defined as control symbols, but we can define it as a user defined symbol, which would be, uh, which will, uh, in turn will be treated as uh, a different, uh, 
a different token or it will be treated as a, uh, a unique token. So for example, uh, so uh, we our model prefix is a MBOS as user. So, and we are, uh, but we are loading for uh, demonstration purpose. We are loading the previous model. So the previous model is just M dot model. Our initial our uh, initial model is M dot model. So in that model, we didn't define any control symbols. And so I mean uh, S and. Uh, same tag of S is defined as a control symbol as a, by default. But if we change it uh, to, to a defined symbol, we can see the difference here. And in the difference, we can check, uh, we can see uh, how each character is treated. So for this one, it is treated as, uh, it is, it is treated as uh, differently. Uh, so which means uh, it will be treated as a distinct uh, token and yeah so we have a beginning of sentence end of sentence uh, and part symbol so for the part symbol uh, so unknown uh, unk means unknown and beginning of a string is just uh, beginning of a string and we can here see so let's say uh, we have a beginning of uh, a string id as one and beginning end of a string as id four i mean as id two but for this work while we are encoding it we can actually see how uh, how it is uh, so if it's a beginning of a string we have one and we have uh, end of a string as two and all the all the other list of uh, encoded values for these two works and for the padding, padding means, uh, for example, we are uh, we have uh, a token size of eight, and our word, a token size of eight means we are expecting eight words, but the input is five words. So to actually accommodate the registry, we use the part symbol. So we will use it uh, to accommodate the rest, the rest part. And to just uh, sampling and and best segment and best segmentation for subword regularization, uh, you can uh, I've attached the whole. Uh, this is from sentence piece uh, repo, so you can actually go there and uh, read more references. And for that, uh, for that we can actually check uh, how it is treated. So, for example. Uh, for our end best, the our Addis Ababa will have uh, the Addis, and yeah, and the next word will have uh, will be split, and also uh, we will actually uh, check the thing, the thing, the thing best, uh, the thing best segment segmentation. So for it, it's just how to segment, how to segment our input. And we can actually check all the encoded values of for each uh, for each value. So, for example, uh, this word is actually encoded as eight, and the uh, this one, which is uh, translated to D, is uh, encoded as ten sixty six. So this is how we use it. How how we check ten based seg n based segmentation. So this is just. Uh, this is just uh, our end of this. This pen represents n. And uh, our next part would be uh, we can just also check here uh, how to uh, encode and check uh, n based pieces. And for the next part, we will see byte pair encoding. And sentence piece supports byte pair encoding for sub, sub word segmentation as a showed you here and uh, if we can just uh, use model type flag as uh, mbpe uh, i mean bpe uh, to to let the string function know we are using it as a byte pair encoding so we can check how it uh, treats uh, how it how uh, encodes pieces but we can actually check the, the difference between byte pair encoding and unigram model. But in the unigram model, we can perform sampling and n-based segmentation. 
and we can actually use it uh, for some more trivialization. And by that, we can actually here see uh, we we don't, we don't really have uh, any best encode, encoded as pieces for this work. But for this work, we can actually uh, see uh, the, um, the model actually trying to encode each pieces and each characters. And for the next one, but if it's a unigram model, as, as it is explained here, unigram model can perform sampling and n based segmentation. So if we, we can actually check, uh, it's uh, trying to find uh, every possible. Uh, so the segmentation so for example we have we can here see the each word being actually segmented and uh yeah and uh, america is not uh, not being segmented but we can actually see uh if it's a model is a unique we can actually segment it and yeah we you can move on and like go on and explore more uh the, the, this notebook has uh, uh vast implementation for uh, for tokenization and yeah we can actually check and since we have a limited time i will just move on to the word embedding and uh, we will have a queue a at the end i will just show you a simple uh, uh, word embedding approach which is just word to vector for amharic and yeah so we will yeah, we will load our data and as you can uh, as you can actually see here i'm using the suggested uh, file structure so when we have a clean directory uh, denoted as clean and final directory denoted as final so in final directory it's just it's it's just a suggestion so since we it it will be easier for us to check uh, if, uh, for example, some you might you might push a simple uh, a sample data. You you won't push the whole data uh, into Git, but for us it would be efficient to check. So, for example, uh, for this one, I, I just uh, pass and cleaned uh, the Tikva the, the Tikva channels data set. I mean my message, and I have around thirty nine thousand. Uh, message unique message and i'm just using here a uh, simple white white space space tokenizer so for which means that i'm just uh, actually uh, converting the whole text into into uh, lists list of words so each uh, we won't have a unique number but we will just find it simple and for uh, our, our word to vector parameters, we will use uh, an embedding size of uh, 100 and so 100 means and a window size and minimum minimum word count is just uh, while, while we are training our model, uh, how many words we should consider for each uh, individual word and for a window size, it's just uh, the window size. For, for example, uh, window size represents, uh, as I've mentioned before, if it's uh, continuous, uh, I mean, if it's a bug of words, or uh, we actually are trying to predict uh, the embedding of the other words to, to predict based on the previous inputs. But so window size it presents that so for example for the next one or the skip gram model we are actually trying to predict the next words given the given a certain word so window size it presents how, how many words are we are trying to uh, predict or the context size so given a context we try to for a continuous bug of words given a context we try to predict the word, but given the, using a skip gram model, we actually try to predict the other words given a simple embedding. So for this one, we will just try, uh, we will train uh, our, we will train the model based on our take of Tikva data set. And for Ethiopia, this is, uh, this is an English meaning uh, country Ethiopia. So, uh, in Amharic, it is written like this, and we will just try to uh, the factor representation of this word. So, by, by this, we just 
trying to represent it, represent the word in vector, in a vector. So this will allow us to actually check if which of the words have a similarity and which of the words have less similarity and more similarity by calculating the distance. So if we, for example, just even let's just predict uh, uh, the word this one they, they will not show you uh, so we have a uh, model dot uh, word data and we will just try to uh, check so for example we can run it and check uh the same five similar uh, words that are uh, have the same or, or a closer uh, vector representation so, for example, for Ethiopia, America, Sudan, and Ethiopia, and Ethiopia, uh, so we are actually we can see uh, how pretty how similar it is. So we can actually use this word embedding uh, in 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 a, a scenario, so like for example, predicting the next word, for example, and after Ethiopia, what what word is that's come so it's it will be efficient enough if we have uh, millions of data so since each word will have a different vector representation in some context so it will actually learn more and it will treat it uh, it will treat each context as uh, as it as it is required so any if it uh, anybody has any questions like we can we can move on to the q and the session i know i'm just Running and uh, going a little bit fast, but I think we already uh, already have gone past time. So that's all. Uh, Rudolf, you can go on. Okay, uh, thank you, Nathanael, for your nice presentation. Um, before you you, you started uh, tokenizing and uh, embedding, I would like to know the the format of your data because I didn't see at the beginning. So I, I I would like to know if it was the GIS, the JSON that uh, okay. you just use, or if you have converted in the CSV or, uh, or... So I just converted the, the JSON to a CSV. I just extracted all the text part of it as a, I think uh, in the in the JSON part we can see the text entities and the text uh, keys. So uh, I using that I just extracted all the text in a tigva.json file and use that as an input. I've used uh, okay. all the uh, listed instructions in the challenge document. So while you the uh, steps you should follow while you're cleaning. So for example, uh, like removing hashtags and removing links, removing symbols. So yeah, uh, I've followed those steps. And, I've used that. Uh, okay, okay. By the way, can you can you show me? Can you show us uh, your process? The process you have followed. I know uh, the 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 challenge document is there to guide us. But can can you show us what you have done? So that I can. Uh, have okay. Uh, okay. Uh, you can follow my approach, and also you can do it. Uh, uh, you can do it uh, in, a, in a way that you want, but let me show you the approach I've used. And so, for example, uh, I have in, in the directories, you can see in the, the data directory, I have uh, in the data directory, I have uh, row, uh, the clean, final, parse, and row. So, the row part that presents the JSON. That, that has been provided to you. So the first thing I, I, I just have implemented is 
Let me just show you the parser part. So while parsing, I've just used uh, this parse message uh, function, just uh, try to parse, uh, so try to pass all, all the message arrays. So this message represents a list, as you can see here, and it's each message. So for example, if it's, uh, if it's, uh, if it's not, uh, as uh, I've mentioned earlier, we have two types, uh, type, type of message. One is a uh, uh, system message and one is just uh, just a message. So if it's a different form message, I'll skip. And length, length of message uh, text is equal to zero, meaning we don't really have anything on the text. So since I'm, I'm interested in the text part, I just uh, continue with the same thing. But if not, I'll just, uh, part the extract the ID. So, for example, I'm just parsing. Let, let's say I'm parsing through this one. So, for message, the first the first one would be a type of dict, right? So, message slash type would be uh, would be or not for this one? Uh, I think it's for this one. So, for this one, we have type, right? So, for this one, we have type. If it's message, we will continue, and we have uh text which is length greater than zero so we won't continue we actually parse so while we're parsing we i will just append uh the id here and also the message content i will just call a function to parse this text so i i, I wrote a parser to parse this text and it will just it's just check if the instance so if it's if it's a string so which mean, it means that we are just having we, we just have a plain message on that one. so i'll just return text and message of uh, this text will have will be appended as message content and for the message content uh, i will uh, for this contents you can here see if it's an array for example if it's an array i need to actually go on and uh, extract all the all these values for this one and also for uh, for the mention and also for the plain message i need to extract it so i will just loop through each array so if it's an array i will just loop through it so i'm i'm currently looking through this and i'm just checking if it's a string so it's not a string right it's a dictionary so if it's a dictionary i will just append to this context i mean for to this content the uh, the value uh, that is represented by the key text and I will I will repeat the same so on our next next iteration I'm checking if it's a string and if it's a string I'll just simply append it and if it's a dictionary I'll just uh, extract the value in the key text uh, and I'll repeat the process until the array is um uh, is finished and also I've uh, I've looked through all the contents all the items and I'll just join I've just joined the list and returned it. And uh, if it's not the case, if if it's is about the case, I'll just return an empty, an empty string. So that's how I parsed. And for the cleaning part, I've used, I've just applied all the, all the rules, extracting emojis. And so, for example, for this one, uh, we have a Unicode. You can, uh, I can. Let me just draw. Uh, this Unicode uh, values for you guys to use. So, I have this uh, link here. In the, uh, so I have uh, dropped uh, a link. So in that link, you will find all the required emojis, all the available emojis in, in the Unicode uh, in the Unicode uh, representation, current representation. So you have, uh, so you, you you include in your regular expression those Unicode characters, I mean Unicode values, and which means this one. And yeah, and pictographs and transport and map symbols, and also country flags. Okay. Uh, yeah. You can use this one as well. Yeah.
And after that, and also if you want to remove any symbols, you can use it. And this is, uh, I'll just drop uh, this regular expressions for you to apply. And the uh, next regular expression is for links. So you can use it as well. So, yeah. Let me share it. So yeah, I've used that approach, and yeah, after that, I've just uh, saved it to to the director. So for example, after parsing, I've uh, saved it in the past one, and after cleaning it, I've saved it in the clean one. And in the final uh, dictionary, uh, in the final directory, I just uh, used it as, uh, for example, for uh, word embedding models and other models. If I'm actually train, training, it, it, it depends on your use case. So, yeah, I hope I answered that uh, efficiently. So, is that clear or not? Uh, okay, uh, which notebooks? Abraham, which notebooks? Uh, the one with the uh, uh, tokenizing and uh, embedding. Yeah, for, for the tokenization part, uh, I'll show the embedding part, but for the tokenization part, as I mentioned, you, you will find it on the sentence piece uh, GitHub repo, and I also attached it as a reference in the, uh, in the slide. So at the end of the slide, you will find several references. So the seventh reference, which is the sentence piece uh, in the master branch, you will find the example I've just demonstrated. But for the embedding one, I'll just share it with you. It's just a simple word embedding model. If, I'm, if you search for it, you will find it. And uh, I've just modified the tokenization part. So if you if you want to use that, I'll just share the uh, share the notebook. Okay, that, that, that's a good word. Okay. Sorry, sorry that I, I was out, uh, but I assume everybody had a better understanding now on on the data, at least just the, the raw data, and um, also how things would, you know, to work out. So, um, tomorrow, we will have a walkthrough on the fine tune, and then I would also follow up on basically just the transformer, just in general, the different components in the transformer. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, okay, uh, go on, Abraham. Okay, uh, on the last, uh, I, I, I wanted to ask, what, was, what were those uh, underscores? Needs to add this Ava and uh, that came up. They were they were not there on the word, but after uh, you loaded them, they become they they were seen there. What were, what are those? The symbols. The underscore score specifically the underscore. Oh, it's, it's just uh, I'm just giving it. Uh, so if you just give it the word, it will it, it won't uh, it, it will try to look word for word so while it's checking for encoding and decoding for i mean for the uh, encoding part so for example it means that you are we are looking for an id right so a particular id so for example let me just show you uh, let me just show you this one also why if it's uh, for the encoding part it will just show you how it is encoded so for example while encoding it will attach so it means it's a word so for example by, by add this it's so a word so it will use that so while decoding you have to use the underscore part see, for it to actually check for a uh, for a string for, for a word actually so yeah it, 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 you should use it while you are uh, decoding it 
So uh, as you can see here, it will just just uh, concatenating it. But for this one, it will actually returning it, uh, encoding it as pieces. So for example, uh, mm -hmm. while you are trying to encode it as pieces for this one, you can see the output here is as pieces. So it will com if you are using pieces, you you need uh, you, you need it will actually give you this one is a piece. So it will. Uh, use uh, beginning of a string as uh, an underscore. I mean, beginning of a word as an underscore. So if, as I've mentioned before, if it's uh, beginning of a sentence, end of a sentence, and a party, right? So for this one, beginning of a word is uh, represented in the underscore part. And we are, if we are encoding it as IDs, it will just return the ID. Part. But if, if it's a piece, it will uh, give you the underscore part. And if you are trying to decode using a piece, for, for example, for this one, I'm trying to decode a piece to ID. So as I've mentioned, a piece is uh, created the, in a underscore, right? So you have to give it in using an underscore, unless it, it will return zero. I think it, it, it won't, I think it will return zero. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, you can go. Hi, uh, Nathaniel. Thank you. Uh, so the data cleaning uh, in the document, it says we need to include uh, four features, and we also add one more, which is uh, tagging or labeling the a message if it is uh, an ad or not. Uh, do we need to include the hashtags for our fine tuning? And oh. for sorry, okay. all right, go, go, you, you, yeah. And for Yabi, uh, maybe a kind of housekeeping. Uh, we were supposed to get um, a sample data how to tag it and also divide the data. Uh, between different groups, or are we going to uh, clean the data by ourselves? I mean, within the group. Yeah, no, I, I think the date, like the division, we say just you, you could, but the formats we, I know, like Nat Nile was also preparing for this, and I was also in another meeting. But the the format we just basically provide now, like after this call. Uh, but the division of like which channels, which group is doing, I, I assume, I thought you would do it just the same as like you did for selecting the models and grouping each other. But if I think that, you know, it's easier. Okay. Let, let, I think yeah, if we don't provide it, it's easier just everyone just says like, I'm, I'm working on this, on this channel. And I think that should be easy. For everyone if everyone just says that i i choose this channel i choose this channel then it's easier just writing it in the same place that you are writing um for each group like you know which model you are working so in the same document you can do that okay yeah yeah and i think yeah slightly a bit late for us to work on yeah to provide that one and uh, the compute but and the, the future i mean the features are we going to include the hashtags? Uh, I mean, I, the I, main think, I mean, I think that the question there is if you want it to generate hashtags, it should understand hashtags. And if you are going to give it a hashtag something so that it can understand, then it you also should have should have a hashtag. If not, you can just remove it if that is not the case. But normally the hashtag can Again, as an as one strategy, you can use it to train to identify hashtags, but not by the hashes. But you know, it's kind of it. So, like this this task, the what makes it difficult is that there isn't one way to do to get good, right? And we don't know what actually would make it good, and it's different trial. Now, every time you think of about teaching think of it as like what are you how do you want it to parse and what do you want it if the challenge that you give it is slightly complex then 
it learns more about the structure. If you now teach it, you know, ask it to identify a hashtag, then we will end up with the hashtag with the hash in the text. Then, you know, unless it then basically is not learning, it just basically learns one quick stuff, which is like, okay, anything that has a hash is a hashtag. And it's not, it probably will not learn much the, the complexity of the language. But if you ask okay. it something a bit okay. complex, then it will start learning the pattern. So, and it is that why sometimes I can't answer, I can't give you a direct answer. And I would say having the hash in the hashtag and asking it to have to identify hashtag is not, probably will not do that much. But if you actually remove the hashes, and if you think there is a pattern in the hashtag, for example, hashtags, the content of a hashtag, for example, you know, no more or something, if it has, or me too, for example, if it is re relevant with the content and there is some connection, then asking it to learn those from the pattern, from a text, lots of text that has that, that word, but, um, um, but and then also the relevant content, it might learn, might piece together what it means, you know, uh, me too. And, and in the in the process of that, it will learn um, the context of the language. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, go on, Rudolf. Oh, sorry, it was a mistake. I do not have any question now. Apart okay. from the fact that we 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 want we, we wish you could share with us the code so that we can get inspired and build also okay. us. No? Okay, uh, I'll I'll share the required codes. That will be a baseline for you guys to uh to start from so start the at least the pre the pre-processing and the word embedding i, I will uh, i will actually add another course to use for n-grams and uh, for uh, another topic model maybe i will just start uh, n-grams i will just share a, a basic course and uh widely referring to the reply message including the so it, for that question, uh, you can, uh, as uh, you have mentioned earlier, you can use it. You can use it to actually create a context for that. So given that reply trade, the context might be different. And if you are ask, including that, you will have a separate context. So while you are using it for pointing the purpose, you can, you can use you can add those as a, as a context and maybe yeah we can elaborate more on that I, I think as i said earlier just it's almost about finding you know when you when you look the data the raw data contains so much information you know the sequence itself is an information where it comes from is an information that means which channel and the the channels themselves are categories right so by identifying for example okay if if you know if you know the channels you know tikva is about news and the other one is about inter entertainment and the other one is about sport now knowing this gives you what most likely the the talks are in that channel and therefore you can use that one you can leverage that information for to to increase the quality of the data because you now say Okay, you know this is about that type of, you know, uh, and then you can use it in that instruction. So, the reply exactly part, the ID, can help you to actually generate a learning, like a, a, a task, an instruction that says, you know, out of, let, let's imagine, there is a, a trade start, and then some other, you know, some qu some of the replies to that trade, and then other texts that are not replies to that, and then you ask. The, basically, during the training, you say which ones could be most likely um, the the reply to this message. So a question and answer, right? So it's a multiple choice, and these are the, the ways to 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 teach. You know that's what's called instruction. 
you know, it's now it's a Q&A. You are training it. And so that you, you use, so that part, you can use it for that. So in your data preparation, you can be really, any anytime you look at time series data, you have to know there's so much information in it. It's just a matter of time. Sometimes you don't really get exactly right there, the, the, the much information. But a time series data has a much, much more uh, information than just simply extracting text. So I think for, and I hope that answers around your question. So you can use it in, to prepare data for Q&A. Thank you. Great, I think um, because of time, we can just yeah stop it here. And um, yeah, thanks, thanks, uh, Nathanael. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, you guys. Yeah. Cheers, everyone. Bye. Bye.